Welcome to the blind zone. What is the blind zone you say? It's something that comes upon you all of a sudden or it's something you refuse to see that was right in front of your face. And today I thought I'd do a very quick video about a fun holiday. For me anyway, it's Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna tell you some stories from my youth and some stories from when I was adult. <laughs> in some of these, in some of the Thanksgivings didn't go very well, but they're still fun stories and Thanksgiving didn't hold a lot of trauma for me. So I, that's why I wanted to share them. Anyway, when I was a child, my mom bowled every Wednesday night. And so she'd get home very late. And one of my mom's tricks, and I, and, and I have to tell you right up front, my mom was not a very good cook, but she did a fairly decent job with the Thanksgiving uh, meal. And so I get my cooking skills from her, which you'll find out later why they're that. That's an important facet. Anyway, so my mom would come home late from bowling night and she found this trick, <clears throat> excuse me, that she would cook the turkey in a brown paper bag and she'd cook it for a really long time and it, it turned out fairly well. And then one year I remember I was so mad because we were gonna have sweet potatoes, which are like my absolute favorite. And she was adding marshmallows. And I remember yelling, stop ruining the, the, the sweet potatoes with those horrible marshmallows. But she did it anyway, and everybody else liked it, but I did not. Then one year, she decided instead of doing the brown bag turkey trick, she had a, a big roasting pan, which, you know, I don't even know if anybody even has one of those anymore. Um, but anyway, so she had this roasting pan, and it was in the basement, and she came home from bowling and she plugged in the turkey and she went upstairs and went to bed and then in the morning well later on we noticed that you couldn't smell the turkey so she went downstairs and found out that the plug had actually fallen out and that the turkey hadn't cooked at all and it just sat there you know thawing and getting him or botulism or whatever happens to to meat that's sitting unattended so she plugged it back in and made sure that it was working. And, you know, she left. It was funny. She didn't do it intentionally, but my dad was so mad. So she rooted around in the freezer and she came up with hot dogs. So we had hot dogs with stuffing and cranberries and the rest of it. And again, it wasn't her fault. She did the best she could. So we had hot dogs for Thanksgiving. And then later on, we had turkey when it finally did finish cooking. But, you know, Thanksgiving was a was a fun event. Again, it wasn't, there was no real trauma for me in that. And we generally had company. We invited people over. And that was always fun for me, too, to have other people in the house. And and I know my mom really tried her best. And, you know, again, she wasn't a good cook. But on Thanksgiving, she seemed to have pulled it off. Then when I was an adult and married, my brother said that his company gave out turkeys for Thanksgiving. And since I had invited them all, did I want to cook that turkey? And I said, sure, that'd be great. So I had a whole house full of people and I cooked this turkey. Well, I had failed to remember that my brother and my brother-in-law, Gary, and my then husband, George, were big eaters. So by the time the platter passed the three of them, there was no more turkey for the rest of us. So I, I recognized they are my ways. So it, it, the meal was fine. I mean, nobody got turkey with those three, but not, not hardly the point. So the next year I invited everybody back again and I bought a turkey that was so big it almost didn't even fit in the oven. And it was huge. And so I thought, this is great. I, I thought I worked out the timing, you know, minutes per pound and all that silly stuff. And I cooked it and I cooked it. <clears throat> And I cooked it some more. And every time I checked on it, it just wasn't quite done. So I turned the heat up more. I, you know, I did whatever I thought I could do to, to hasten this process. Because I, in one of my problems with cooking is I never have been able to get everything come out at the same time. You know, all the, the hot stuff at the same time to put on the table. So I could tell that the rest of the meal was going to get shot. So I took my son aside and I said, look, I don't think the turkey's cooked all the way. So don't eat the turkey, eat everything else, but don't touch the turkey. So he and I didn't eat the turkey. And to my knowledge, nobody else got sick, but 
you know, the turkey was on the table and everybody ate and it was fine. I had plenty of food that year. Well, then after uh, George and I divorced, I still wanted to have Thanksgiving, but I don't really like turkey. So I invited a bunch of people over and I served spaghetti. Well, <laughs> you would have thought that I just committed the biggest crime in the in the world. And they went home grumbling. Who serves spaghetti on Thanksgiving? Well, the next year, I didn't invite those people, but I invited other people and we had steaks on the grill. And even now, when I ask my son about his, his Thanksgiving memories, he always brings up, um, are you talking about the time you tried to serve me undercooked turkey or the time you gave me spaghetti? And I'm like, e either one of those are, are good to know. And then later on, <coughs> excuse me, later on when I was married to David, we didn't have opportunity to have a lot of people over. They were already pretty invested in where they had already always had Thanksgiving at. So it was just he and I, and I hated to make that big mess for, for just he and I, but I, I did it a couple of years. And then one year he said he was going to do it. And I should have learned my lesson because he uses every bowl, every spoon, every plate, every platter, every pan, every, and, and, and so for me, the distraction is trying to eat and looking over at that sink and the counter with that huge mess that I'd have to, you know, help clean up after. Now, one of the best parts about Thanksgiving was when I was invited to other people's houses, so I didn't have to cook at all. And I could just sit there and, you know, ask, ask with pretty insincere motives, is there anything I can help you with? Knowing they knew my culinary skills and they'd all yell, no, 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 you just stay where you're at. And David's ex-wife, Shelly, she always invited us for Thanksgiving and she was a really, really good cook. And she was always very gracious and kind to us. So we went there and had a lovely Thanksgiving and the girls came and sometimes she would invite my son when he was in town. So again, I really do like Thanksgiving. I like when other people cook it for me because again, I'm not real good as a hostess. I, I'm just, that's just not my forte. And then last year, my friend Cindy invited me to her house for Thanksgiving. And so every month after that, my son is asked, so are you going to abandon us again this year? Because once my son lived near me, he then does Thanksgiving. And he's an excellent cook. He did not get that from me. But he's an excellent cook. And so he always does a lot of fun things. And so I've, I've told him, yes, I'm planning on being at your house for Thanksgiving because my friend Cindy is going out of town. So, you know, I guess I'll be there. But again, I do like Thanksgiving at other people's houses. I, I do like Thanksgiving. I do like the just a day to just be thankful and it, just recognize the blessings that we have. And it isn't just the food, it's the company and looking back and seeing all the way that we truly have been blessed. And that's always been kind of a fun tradition too, where he goes around the table and tells you what they're thankful for. And and you can't repeat somebody else. So you just can't say I'm thankful for family and then start shoveling the mashed potatoes. So you have to be a little more conscientious of what you're thankful for. And for me this year, I guess I'm thankful that I, I'm healthy. My family's healthy. I have three grandkids that I just love and adore. And I have some fabulous friends that I have made since I've been here, since I moved here to Georgia. And I have a couple other fabulous friends that are that are scattered throughout. And I think that's it. Family, friends, my church, just, I, I am blessed. I am blessed, blessed, blessed. I am blessed in so many ways. So for this Thanksgiving, I don't know what your Thanksgiving funny stories are. And I do remember that Janine cooked her first turkey and she said oh I didn't know that they already added all the stuffing well she didn't take the neck and the kidneys out and she cooked it like that and we still laugh but seriously she's an excellent cook and that was a million years ago so she didn't do that again but again so I don't know what your Thanksgiving stories are but I pray that this Thanksgiving that you recognize the blessings that you have and even the bumps in the road that you see all the positive things that you have going on and that you eat well and you're faithful with your friends and your family and you enjoy this Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving from the Blind Zone.